travels. <clears throat> in 1920, he accompanied his friend Herman Sig on a business trip to North Africa. His intention was to see for once the European from the outside. Reflected by a Malua, which was foreign in every respect, he held that the only way of gaining an understanding of one's own national peculiarities was through becoming aware of how others viewed them. Hence, traveling was a gateway to a comparative ethnopsychology. Given his understanding of the historical layering of the collective unconscious, his geological, geographical voyages were a form of phylogenetic time traveling. Africa made an overempoweringly deep impression on him. It meant encountering the historical past as a living present. To Emil Medner, he wrote in March, The most mysterious here are the nights of the waxing moon that wanders in indescribably silver clarity across the dark, clear sky of Africa. The symbol of the Punic tombs of Carthage, the star to herself came close to me when I saw the moon slowly descend over the top of the palm trees for the unconscious. A symbolic act of the grandest style, nevertheless, the meaning is still dark. Young felt that the people he encountered had an intensity that Europeans lacked, and which he believed himself to be phys- psychically infected by. While in Tunis, he had a powerful dream. The night before we embarked for Marcial, I had a dream which I sense summed up the whole experience. This was just as it should be, for I had accustomed myself to living always on two planes simultaneously. One conscious wallet which attempted to understand and could not one unconscious which wanted to express something and could not formulate it any better than by a dream I dreamt that I was in an Arab city and as in most such cities there was a citadel a citadel a kaba a kaspa the city was situated in a broad plain and had a wall all around it the shape of the wall was square and had and there were four gates. The caspa in the interior of the city was surrounded by a wide moat, which is not the way it really is in Arab countries. I stood before a wooden bridge leaning leading over the water to a dark horse shaped portal, which was open. Eager to see the citadel from the inside, also I stepped out on the bridge <coughs> and I was about halfway across it. A handsome dark Arab of aristocratic, almost royal bearings came towards me from the gate. I knew that this youth in the white burnous was the resident prince of the citadel. When he came up to me, he attacked me and tried to knock me down. We wrestled in the struggle we crashed against the railing. He gave way and both of us fell into the moat where he tried to push my head underwater to drown me. No, I thought this is going too far. Great admiration. I felt this is going too far. And in my turn, I pushed his head underwater. I did so, although I felt great admiration for him. But I did not want to let myself be killed. I had no intention of killing him. I wanted only to make him unconscious and incapable of fighting. Then the scene of the dream changed, and he was with me in a large vaulted octagonal room in the center of the citadel. The room was all white, very plain and beautiful. Along the light-colored marble walls stood low divans, divans, and before me on the floor lay an open book with black letters written in magnificently calligraphic calligraphy on milky white parchment. It was not Arabic script, rather it looked to me like a Ugurian script of West Turkestan, which was familiar to me from the Manichaean fragments from Turfan. I 
did not know the contents, but nevertheless, I had the feeling that this was my book, that I had written it. The young prince with whom I had just been wrestling sat to the right of me on the floor. I explained to him that now that I had overcome him, he must read the book, but he resisted. I placed my arm around his shoulders and forced him, with a sort of paternal kindness and patience, to read the book. I knew that this was absolutely essential, and at last he yielded. In retrospect, Jung reflected as follows on this dream. In this dream, the Arab youth was the double of the proud Arab who had ridden past us without a greeting. As an inhabitant of the Kaaba, Kaspa, he was a figuration of the self, or rather, a messenger or emissary of the self. For the Kaspa from which, for the Kaspa from which he came, was a perfect mandala, a citadel surrounded by a square wall with four gates. His attempt to kill me was an echo of the motif of Jacob's struggle with the angel. He was to use the language of the Bible. He was to use the language of the Bible like an angel of the Lord, a messenger of God who wanted to kill men because he did not know them. Actually, the angel ought to have had his dwellings in me, but he knew only angelic truth and understood nothing about man. Therefore, he first came forward he first came forward as my enemy however i held my own against them in the second part of the dream i was the master of the citadel he sat at my feet and had to learn to understand my thoughts or rather learn to know man obviously my encounter with arab culture had struck me with overwhelming force